Hello, this is the final uh, talk on the brain, our bodies, and how they interact, how we can hack our minds, how we can hack our bodies. Does this make a difference to the way we function in the world? So far, we've concentrated on artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, and things like that. But technology also affects our own intelligence and our own learning. So let's have a look at human learning and human intelligence. There are a number of ways we try to af affect our brains, our consciousness, our attention, our concentration, and so on. And these can be broadly classified into th three uh, uh, categories, physical, behavioral, and biochemical, if you like. Um, biochemical are the ones which include drugs like mod modafinil uh, or modafinil. I'm never quite sure how you pronounce that, but, um, you know, the, the, uh, uh, or tea or, or, or coffee or nicotine or alcohol even, uh, or amphetamines. A whole range of um, uh, drugs and things that we can use, um, some of which have an effect and some of which have very little effect. Um, what we do know is that often the baseline from which these things start can be uh, uh, mean that there are better improvements for people than others. So if you've got a fairly low level baseline, low level intellectual baseline, um, amphetamines etc might uh, uh, work better for you than if you're starting from a higher sort of cognitive plane so um, yeah we need to know the current state of the person and what's going on what are their hormonal levels like you know various other aspects and so on and um, but we do know that these have some effects we don't know about all the side effects um, we don't know whether they're good or bad um, but we are experimenting. People do experiment with this. You know, we see it with the use of uh, kinds of drugs like LSD and ecstasy. And perhaps the uh, um, a use which is gaining prominence is in the area of psychiatry and psychology, where people are using um, mind-altering drugs to assist in breakthroughs in things like depression. So. Um, uh, uh, people are using ketamine or LSD, uh, psilocybin, uh, MDMA as ways of uh, accelerating the brain, if you like, and thereby causing a, a, a sudden breakthrough. This has to be uh, uh, combined with various kinds of therapy, talking therapy and so on. But it does seem to be far superior than the usual SSRIs, you know, the, the, the Prozacs and other kinds of drugs that people take, which possibly have very mi minimal effect anyway in terms of uh, curing or dealing with depression. So we are seeing a big move in this area. Um, if we look at uh, uh, physical aspects, we see uh, um, people implanting chips, uh, um, uh, maybe uh, uh, providing electrical stimuli to the scalp and the brain um, and various other things. These are, are again, relatively unknown. Uh, um, no major experiments, so we don't really know what the, uh, the overall benefits are. And of course there are risks. Uh, uh, every time we break through the skin or the, the body's barriers between the outside and the inside, uh, we increase the risk of infection and various other things happening that could be in themselves dangerous, let alone what it is we are doing. Um, we still don't fully understand the brain, so to mess around with the brain can be uh, uh, very tricky. But, if anything, this is the one area which has been carried out at a very basic level by many individuals um, who are putting up their videos on YouTube and things like that saying this is what I've done, I've been hacking my brain and I've got this and that and so on. The other one is uh, behavioral. So we've had biochemical, physical 
Now behavioral. Behavioral can be something like sleep, making sure you get enough sleep, proper kind of sleep, you know, cool, well-ventilated room and so on. Um, not overdosing yourself on caffeine or alcohol, eating well, getting exercise. You know, exercise is good for um, mental health um, and, and attentions. We know that uh, um, mnemonic training is good for memory. We know that meditation is good for attention, but the two don't necessarily cross over. You need to do both in order to get the benefits for each. Just doing one doesn't give you everything in that way. Yoga, Tai Chi, um, things like this, which are, are focus on things like breathing, movement, body awareness, uh, uh, attention, um, you know, withdrawal from the, the outside world. Are, are, are ways in which we can improve ourselves and our place in the world. I've mentioned this before, the concept of monkey minds, where we, our brains chatter away to uh, inside our heads all the time and, and, and just provide us with nonsense. They think about the future, which hasn't arrived yet. Think about the past, which we can't do anything about. Rarely does it chatter about the present. Things like meditation, yoga, tai chi and so on tend to focus you in the present which is where you are, where you exist, and where you spend most of your time. So it's relevant that we focus on those kinds of things. There are, um, I would say, uh, uh, quite a lot of other technologies that are going to affect this. Nanotechnology, where we're going to start putting small kinds of bots into our bloodstreams to perform medical procedures inside the body. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, uh, we will begin to think about uh, uh, mass kinds of treatment um, in some countries that already exist, for example, uh, putting fluoride in the water supply to improve teeth and dental health is, is a common feature in some countries. Um, we see max vaccinations against COVID, flu, measles, many other diseases uh, as part of a public health regime. So we are thinking about the body's place in the world, if you like. Will we become machine-human hybrids? Will we become transhuman? I don't know. Possibly. Uh, um, uh, Yuval Harari thinks so in Homo Deus. Uh, Nick Bostrom at the Oxford uh, uh, in Internet Institute thinks we might. Uh, some people are very frightened of these kinds of things. We see films like Her, um, Ex Machina uh, uh, and, and various other ones, I can't remember at the moment, but where people uh, uh, change in response to um, external stimuli. I suppose one of the most unusual in a way is The Fly, uh, David Cronenberg's film The Fly, where somebody <coughs> is blended with a fly and gets superhuman strength and so on, but becomes a fly. I mean, that's impossible. That's not going to happen. But it, it just shows us what things we can imagine and might happen in that way. So this, I think, is the new frontier for us. AI, machine learning, all well established. What we do to ourselves and how we do it, that is all new. That is something we are still going to have to see how that develops and what it means.